I'm happy to introduce Eli Porat from Bar Ilan University. Uh, Eli visited Google as a visiting researcher last semester. He got his PhD in computer science in 2000, and then after that uh, did his military service, and at the same time worked as a faculty member of Bar Ilan University. And now he's back, I think, at his alma mater at uh, Bar Ilan University. So Eli mainly worked on matching problems, and not matching in the graph theoretic sense, but pattern matching, string matching, subset matching. And you also worked on designing sketches and edit distance and various other algorithmic problems. And today he will talk about the Bloom filter. Thank you. Uh, then I have this microphone, but it might uh, stop in the middle and then just say if you don't hear me, okay? Is that you? <laughs> then I talk with that. <laughs> you hear me? Okay. Then I talk with this microphone. Okay, then I'm going to talk about uh, Bloom filter today. Uh, this work, uh, part of this work done with Yossi Matthias, actually part of this slide, a copy from y Yossi Matthias. Uh, I just men mentioned that. Then the outline of the talk, I will start by uh, defining the problem, uh, give uh, some motivation, then I give the basic Bloom filter, some improvement, and the last improvements that I know. Then problem definition. We start, f I have uh, four problems, uh, four different, uh, four kind uh, of different problems. The first uh, problem is given a set x1 until xn of a big universe uh, u of size uh, big n. We want to pre-process uh, the set in order to answer a membership query. The second problem is to do it, uh, you have a data, you want to build a data structure that will support insertion, deletion, and query membership. And the third problem is that because the second problem is too hard uh, to do, then we don't support uh, a deletion. And the fourth problem is uh, when we have a data, uh, we want to insert an element with the data, we don't support deletion as well, uh, and we want to retrieve the data of the element, and some of the data structure enable us to change the data. Uh, and when I say that deletion is hard, you can say that there are a lot of uh, data structures that are doing that. Why deletion is hard? Deletion is hard when we want to optimize the space as well. And we see it in the next slide. Uh, I want to mention that the data is usually really small. It can be two or three bits. Uh, and all of this talk, I will, will, will concentrate on how many bits I w I'm using. Then store in a set. We have the set x1 till xn, uh, like before I said, from universe big N. The easiest way to store, to store a set is by storing a sorted array. I store a sorted array, it will take, usually take n time log n, log big, big n uh, space, because each element take uh, log n space, okay? B uh, the query will be done in off log n, there is a way to reduce the space. It's, it's really trivial. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't put here a reference. I just heard that there is a paper uh, in Sura 2004 that mentioned this thing. There is a way to do it in n log n over n uh, plus little of n. Uh, and this way enable you insertion, uh, deletion, uh, query, and even you can add data, then it enables you all, all, all that you need. Another way to do it is by using perfect hash, then this, the regular perfect hash will take C time n log n, where C is some constant, it depends on the implementation of the perfect hash, uh, and we retrieve a value in of one uh, time. Uh, and again, it can be improved to be C time n pl plus uh, n time log n over n. Uh, the problem is that there are, there are lower bound that we must use n log n over n bits. Then what I'm doing here, uh, then what I'm going to do is if we allowed some mistakes, then the lower bound doesn't hold and the only lower bound is omega of n and that's what we are going to do. Okay, it's clear? It's clear there? Okay, 
types and what I'm calling mistakes and mistake types. When I query x, if x in the set, I always return 1. If x not in the set, I may return 1. I may mistake. That call false positive. Uh, when uh, I have data structure that, uh, that uh, I can retrieve the value, uh, then it won't uh, mistake. Most of the data structure won't uh, uh, mistake on the value. Uh, but if x not in S, it might be the case that I will, uh, uh, will return some random value. Then here is a little motivation. There are a lot of motivation. Uh, specific in Google, you can think about SS table and things like this that you can improve the, uh, the you can improve the query time to SS table and things like this. I give here a motivation for uh, internet cache uh, protocol. Uh, when client go to proxy, uh, the proxy first uh, seeking its cache, the cache is in the disk, it takes several milliseconds, and then it gets an answer that it is not in the cache. After it, he ask the proxy itself, ask all his neighbors uh, proxies, and they return to him that they doesn't find anything, and only then it go to the internet. You see that if I have here four proxies, then for each uh, query, I will ask the four proxies then, then uh, it's a lot of query. It's a lot of time to get to getting in, in in the disk, and I spend here uh, several milliseconds, which you know Google want to reduce uh, uh, the query time even from uh, 200 milliseconds. And several milliseconds, it's a lot. Then what are we going to do? I will go into do summarize of the cache by data structure like Bloom filter. Uh, when I ask in the proxy. It will, it will go to his main memory, which uh, will have this summarized, and uh, ask if, uh, if this uh, home page is in the cache. Here is a red arrow that it means that it's not in the, uh, th that his answer is not in the cache. He asks, this is the summary of, let's say, this proxy. He asks if it's in the cache of the second proxy. It answers that it's not. He asks that if it's uh, in the cache of the third proxy, then here it's answered that it's uh, that is there, but it might be the case that there is a mistake. Then he's going to there asking, he return uh, an answer that is not for there. For example, he asking the the fourth proxy is here, and then he go to the internet. Then first of all, all of this thing <coughs> was uh, was done uh, uh, against the main memory. Then it was really fast. As you see here, I I have. I have a fewer query for each proxy because before each proxy got all the query of all the user. Now, only the proxy that gets a query will get a query, and all other proxy will get a query with low probability. <coughs> then, because of that, it's called Bloom filter because it filters the communication. Okay, clear. Yeah. Then there was the uh, motivation. Now, what is Bloom filter? Then Bloom filter is called after Bloom from. Uh, 1970, uh, I start by allocating an array of bits. All the talk I'm talking on bits. Then I start by allocate an array of m bits. I will describe what is m afterward. I add, I add already n, big n, and now I have m. Uh, I allocate an array of m bits. I have the set x1 until xn. I get some. I took some random hash function, uh, and I hash each element. Uh, to the, to one uh, un to one uh, until m, and I put one in the place of uh, the hash. It might be the case, for example, here that there is a collision. Uh, if there is a collision, I put one on one. I don't have a problem with that. Then that all what I do. Now our query work. If I looking for x i, then I hash x i. I always we find one there because my uh, what I done at the preprocessing step was to hash x i to there and put the one. If I going uh, to seek for y, which y is not in the set, then when I hash y, it might be the case that it will be zero one. But if there are fewer uh, one than zeros, then it will be with low probability. Then the question is, what is the probability that <coughs> I will see the one? Then the probability that I see the one is depend on the number of ones. Then actually we can compute it. 
it's easy to compute, uh, the, this probability. And actually, if we choose m to b n log e, log e is on a base of 2, we will get a probability uh, of half. Now, if you want to reduce uh, the, the probability of mistake, we have uh, two options. We can set m to be bigger, or we can uh, run this algorithm several times. If we run the, this algorithm k times, each time I have here another hash function, hash1 until hk, uh, we, will, uh, we will get a lower probability. And actually, what I write in this slide is that we can hash it on the same array, which the array will be uh, bigger. Uh, there is advantage to do it li uh, like this way, because in this way, we can easily di distribute it. And this way, it's uh, harder to distribute it. Then what we get, given x, we always say, uh, x in s, we always say that uh, it in is in s. If x not in s, uh, if y is not in s, with, with probability 2 to the minus k, we will be wrong, and we say that it's uh, in, x in s. The space is nk time log e, and the query time is of k, and I mark log e and of k in red because this thing I will improve. <coughs> okay? Then what this Bloom filter uh, support? Then actually I, I say that it, it was pre-processing the set, but actually it support insertion. It's really e easy to insert thing. I just hash it and put there one, and it support worry. It doesn't support deletion, okay? Because it might be the case that there was a collision there, then I, I don't want to, to take this one and move it to zero. Then Bloom filter with deletion, how I will do that? I will, I will, uh, I will put instead of bit, I put here counters. And each time I'm inserting an element, I will increment the counter. For I have here k hash function, I will increment each 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 place. Each time we want to delete, we decrease the counter. Uh, with i probability, the counter will be bounded by log of k times n. That because if you if you throwing uh, let's say uh, if you throwing I don't have empty letter if you throwing uh, d balls to d cells then the biggest uh, cell will be log d over log log d then log k n it's big is bigger than log k n over log log k n uh, then I, I to to save this counter each counter will take me log log of k n bits. Uh, there is a little bit problem here. You see that it, I will uh, I will run it all uh, if I delete something that is not in the Bloom filter. It can uh, be a disaster. Okay. Then the space is n k log log n k. Okay. It's clear. It's only the basic. A spectrum Bloom filter. I only sketch it. Uh, in Spectrum Bloom Filter, you want uh, to retrieve for each element a data. For example, how many times I, I saw this element, a counter. Uh, then uh, then wh when I want to set uh, x, I want to set to give him the value d. What I, what I will do, I will add d to all of his counter. And the an answer to the query will be to report the minimum. With high probability, uh, when I'm adding, when uh, I having these counters for x i, with high probability, one of the counter is are only for x i and not for all uh, all the other, and then I will sh will see what is the value of x. Okay. Another version, it's uh, another heuristic there, uh, is when I uh, when I want to set x one to be d. Xi to be d. What I will do, I will probe all this location. I will see which play all the places that, that get the minimum value, and I only increase the counters that get the that less than d. I will increase the uh, I will increase in a way that the reporting will be correct, and then I won't rule for uh, other uh, other element. And there is a heuristic here that if I see the same minimum twice, then with higher probability, 
uh, is the correct value. I don't want to go into that. Then Shazal et al. Uh, gave another uh, data structure that uh, to, bl uh, to Bloom filter, which called Bloomier filter. This is the first version. I want. I actually want to skip that because the second version is better. Then uh, the version two. Version two of uh, Bloomer filter filter is as follow, is is based on uh, on Mazuski paper from ninety six, and the keyword here is AHG, which is acyclic hypergraph. I drawn here a regular graph, but uh, you can think about it as a hypergraph. And what I'm going to do, I allocate here, I, I allocate here <coughs> m, ver m vertices. The m vertices will be the array of size m. Now, each of my my element will be edge, edge random edge by uh, by my uh, my hash function. Now, the value here, here this uh, data structure support given a value. The value of uh, element will be the XOR of the vertices of the element. For example, the value of x1 will be the the data is uh, the value of uh, of this node and this node XOR of them. Okay. Now you see that I have a problem. If I set the value of x1, I set this node and this node, and after it I set the value of x2, then I set this node and this node, then I have a problem with x3. Then what uh, Mazuski done and Shazal et al. done is that they, because this graph, they asked the, this graph to be acyclic, and with high probability a random graph like this will be a, a, a without cycles, then they first, they, they find an order, uh, in their order, they will first uh, give the value uh, for x3. They give the value for that and that. And when I give, uh, gave the value for x3, now to give a value for x1, I don't have a problem because I have this free node. Then I can easily set the value of this node. OK? Is it true that the size of the set hyperedge must have the odd size in order to be important? Because you've got to set an odd number of things when you set an odd number of positive results when you decrease. Yeah? So uh, this, the, uh, this hypergraph is only two. Uh, the, the node here are not only zero and one, it's a data. It can be more than zero and one. Okay. And there are no pro problem that it will be, uh, uh, that, that it will be uh, zero and one. And accept that what we are saying is uh, there is a problem for, uh, it's a better to take its odd. Because if it's uh, even, then you can see that, th for example, here it might, I if you have, uh, it it will be if it will be must to be uh, zero one zero one or something like this. Then it might might throw some randomness, but I think that uh, you can prove that uh, it will work uh, as well. Okay. Uh, actually, the best way to do it, uh, they can do it with uh, with two. Uh, the best way to do it uh, is to take hypergraph of uh, of three. It be it means that each edge contains three vertices, and then they get uh, a space of one. Point two three n k, and actually this data structure doesn't support deletion, but actually they done a really clever data structure that will support uh, changing the value of element. Okay. Then the data structure look like this. I won't. Uh, I don't. I won't have time to explain it. Uh, then I jump here to a lower bound. And actually, the lower bound, uh, it's really easy, <laughs> as you see. Uh, the lower bound actually said that uh, what, I, what I want to, I want to store, uh, I, I have this, this amount of sets. Uh, and I want to store them. But now, I'm willing to add an error of 2 to the minus k. Then I add to this set 2 to the minus k time the big N uh, element. But now each set, uh, I can each one of these set, I can map it to this amount of sets. Then, from an information point of view, you get here that I need n time k uh, bits. Okay. 
then now uh, more improvement. Then uh, first, what I call choose bloom filter from 2002. Uh, choose bloom filter, it's a really neat trick. Uh, in bloom filter, I looked only on one place for getting a, a, a error of half. Uh, I look at K place to get a, a bigger, a smaller uh, error probability. Here, what I will do, I will look, for example, here at three for each element, I will look at three places, and uh, I will ask that that, uh, for example, here I will ask that uh, at least two of the places will be one. For example, xi here is in the set, then you see that here is zero, but here are two ones. Okay? For example, y is not in the set, then you see that here h1 of y is zero, here h2 of y it might be one, and h3 of y is zero, then it, not in it is not in the set. And actually, for, for bigger k, it will work better because you can see the normal distribution, then we actually get be a better result in, in terms of space. But uh, it, will be a, a, it will be off K as before time. Uh, then actually to get better results, you do need to do it offline. You do need to pre-process it uh, before because you, you, want to see, you want to see in this array, you want to see, for example, if you see that this element, a lot of uh, the xi map to him, you, you map to it to one. If, for example, this element, you see that only this xi map to here, then you put it zero. Then you do some statistic in order to, to choose uh, which bit to set to one and which bit to leave zero. Okay? Compressed uh, bloom filter is a paper from of uh, Mitzenmeicher. Uh, then, as I told you before, the bloom filter is not optimal up to factor of log e. Log e is one over lan, lan two. Then, in compressed bloom filter, I just allocate a big array of two to the k time n. Then you can see easily that the probability of mistake will be uh, less than two, uh, less than two to the minus k. And now, what I will do, I will compress that. I will compress that. I write here how many zero I see. Here at the beginning I see four, after it's three, and so on and so on. This thing using open encoding will take me n time k plus one bits. Uh, but the problem of this data structure is that it's have all the information in order to give me a probability of mistake to the minus k, but I will do query time. The query is, uh, it will take me a lot of time. Uh, then is algorithm doesn't support query time, we use it in order to, to synchronize between proxy, like the first motivation that I gave. Uh, and when you synchronize between proxy, you don't have the, the problem by of compressing them and sending the bloom filter and then opening the bloom filter uh, at the, the second proxy. Uh, then it work good for him. Uh, here I give uh, a heuristic how to improve his uh, algorithm. Then the heuristic work as follow. I will start by allocating not uh, a 2 to the k time n, I will allocate c time 2 to the k time n. Then it means that I have a smaller probability to mistake. And I can, uh, I can manage, I, I, can, uh, I can add this probability because I have a smaller probability to mistake. Then what I will do, I have the ability to add here once when, wherever I want. This is the compressed sentence of this, and I add it once whenev whenever I want. Here, each red one is one that I add, and you can see that if I add this one uh, according to my mechanism of compression, then I will be able to compress it better. For example, you see this string is is uh, is bigger, but you can see that I have here a lot of three, and it's uh, more uh, it can compress uh, more. Okay, then it's a uh, really cute uh, heuristic. Uh, Exponential bloom filter. I, I won't get here a lot of into details, but uh, this is the data structure that uh, I done with uh, Yossi Matthias. And in this data structure, we use the compressed bloom filter that uh, we allocate array of two to the k time n, and with a data structure that is uh, similar to the rank data structure, we've been enabled. Uh, to get a random access to the compressed string. 
then it won't we won't need to open the whole uh, string before uh, before query. Then it's really the same like uh, the same mechanism like uh, compressed rank data structure. And here I have the details of uh, how it will be little of n, but I won't get into that details. And I only want to remark that uh, this algorithm work really well if uh, I working if I doing a bloom filter on disk because in disk you can say that the word size is the block size and then uh, I can compress more. Now uh, another way to look on bloom filter. So the idea of another way to look on bloom filter or, or, or all these kind of set, uh, set of problem is to look on the element x1 until xn and to ask them to some h1 until hn. Here h1 until hn is the h of the values. It's not the h function. Now each hi I will take to be log n plus k. You will see why it's log n in uh, a minute. <coughs> How I will search when uh, I given uh, given y, I will ash it to some h prime, and now I check if there exists some i such such that h prime equal to h i. Now, what is the probability if if y is in the set, then it always return one. But what is the probability uh, that I will return one if y is not in the set? The probability is easy. Uh, the probability of of th that there exists i such that h i uh, h of y will be uh, equal to h i is is less or equal to the sum of the probability. It says it is a union bound, which each probability is two to the minus log n minus k. I have n element, then it's two to the minus k. Then I add to use the extra log n there. Okay. Then the only question now uh, is how to search this h. Uh, how to search for h prime. And actually, I remark here that this thing works with pairwise independent. I don't need uh, more than pairwise independent here. OK? Then one of the ideas uh, to store the, uh, this h prime is by uh, doing ash. Uh, then what I call ash bloom filter is I allocate here uh, n uh, element here of size k plus uh, plus c, and uh, when I query x, I just go to uh, to the place h of x, and I see the award uh, w, and I match if h prime uh, if another h, h function h prime of x equal to w, and what is the probability that a random word will be equal? Then if x if x if this is the word of x then uh, it will be equal. If x not in the set, then the probability that h of x will be equal to, uh, to w is 2 to the minus k minus c. But now I have a problem with collision, because if two uh, elements match to the same place, I will have two, uh, two different w's. Then I need to uh, some, somewhere to put them. Then what I will do, I will do another hash, uh, hash table of all the elements that collide. Uh, I have here, you can see that I have here uh, 1 over e uh, time n element that uh, will fall on something that already is there. Uh, uh, what I mean by falling on something that already is there, if I put here, if I start by hx and this was empty, then I put here w. Now I try to add hy and it fall here, and I see that it's full, then I move to here. I try to enter it here with another hash function. And here I need 1 over e time n space. And I will continue uh, by 1 over e to the power of 2 time n, and so on. Or I can just cut it when it's enough to for me and run another data structure that supports uh, the query. OK? Uh, actually, to optimize it uh, to get a better space complexity, uh, we can do several rehash on one array, and actually we can more on more more of that we can use here, uh, not n. We will use q n cells, and actually it will work better for q when q is less than one. 
And this data structure uh, is supporting insertion. The other uh, complicated data structure didn't support insertion. Okay. And again, it used only pairwise independent hash function. Now, this is a quick sur uh, survey on uh, cuckoo hashing. Uh, how, how many of you doesn't know what is cuckoo hashing? You don't know? Then I will uh, start by exp explaining what is cuckoo hashing. <laughs> then cuckoo hashing is a really neat technique to do perfect hashing. It's hashing that uh, when you search for element, you will search only two places. You will search, uh, you will do uh, hash one and search the element uh, here, and, and if you don't find, you do hash two and search the element here. If you don't find it, it doesn't appear. You do only twice the hash. Then query is easy, but how you build this kind of uh, perfect hashing? Then the answer, then how I do insertion, let's, let's uh, now uh, let's assume that I want to enter, enter x, and I get to hash one and it, it full there, and I go to hash two and it's full, uh, and it's full for, uh, with something else, then I see here, at the place of uh, of of uh, of ash one of x, I see here, uh, I see a. Then what I will do, I will move a to the to ash two of a, and I will see, for example, here b. Then I will move b to ash two of b, and what I am doing is a change of of uh, of moving, and I I wrote here that the size of this array is two plus epsilon n then you can see that half of the places are uh, empty. Then it means that each step, I have a probability of half to stop. Then with really high probability, uh, uh, in average, I will do off one uh, swap. With I really high probability, I will do less than log n swap, uh, off log n swap. Uh, and with really high probability, I won't have cycles that will uh, destroy it all. OK? A cycle can destroy this uh, data structure then with high probability, I want a cycle. Then this is cuckoo hashing. It's a really neat uh, technique by a uh, uh, page. Uh, and now cuckoo bloom filter. Cuckoo bloom filter uses the cuckoo uh, hashing. Then first thing, as you see, uh, this thing is really wide. In cuckoo bloom, bloom filter, this thing isn't, uh, isn't wide. <laughs> and other thing, this here it's eight time n. I just choose eight by like this. You can change it to sixteen uh, n or, s or whatever you want. And what I'm go going to do, I will have another. Uh, I will have your array of n element uh, of wide of k minus three. You will see why it's minus three in a uh, in a moment. And what I'm going to do for for searching for x, I will start by looking this array uh, on h one of x. If I see here 0, I will say that x is not in the set. If I see here 1, I will say that x might be in the set. But for checking if x is in the set, what I will do, I will do rank query. What is rank query? I am asking on this array how many ones I see before. What is the sum of the array until here? There is a rank data structure that can do it in off one time. Uh, and then I will go to this array, to this location. I will know exactly which location I, I, I'm going to. And then I will ask if it's equal. If it's equal, I will say with high probability that x is in the set. And, and you can see that I add a probability of 1 over 8 to fail here, because uh, only, one of, uh, uh, only 1 over 8 of the element here are 0. And here I have a probability, here it's k minus 3, I have a probability of 2 to the minus k uh, plus 3 uh, that this will be equal. But now cuckoo, uh, cuckoo hashing and cuckoo bloom filter, it might be the case that it is in H2. Then if this thing fail, I'm going to, to prop to H2 of x. Again, I will do a rank operation. I will get the, the place. And again, I query if it's the same. And actually, what I'm getting here, I just say that it's need of log n wise independent uh, hash function. What I'm getting here is that using 4n memory bit, I can support this array of 8n bits uh, with rank operation. Why? How can I store 8n bits in 4n bits? 
is because I can compress it. This array, most of it is zero. <coughs> then I can do it in 4n uh, memory bit. And the space that I get is n time k plus 1 plus little o of n. And the query time will be o of 1 because I just go to this array, do a rank operation which take me o of 1 and uh, compare the element. And again, go to if, I, if it's fail, I go to this place, uh, do a rank operation, compare this element, then it's o of 1 query time. And probability for mistake, I have here 9 over 8. This 9 over 8, it depends on this constant. If I do it 16n, it will be uh, 17 over 16. OK? And this data structure actually doesn't support insertion, but I wrote here support insertion uh, because I can uh, change it a little bit that it will support insertion. Then the first thing that I need to do to send uh, is the hash function. The hash function, as you remember, the cuckoo, uh, the cuckoo hashing, when I want to insert, uh, insert x, it might be the case that this place is full. Then I, want, uh, then I will want to rehash the elements at, at this place. Then in cuckoo hashing, I don't have a problem to rehash this element because I know it. In uh, cuckoo bloom filter, when I see here a 1, I don't know what is the uh, element, how I can uh, rehash it. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to, uh, to describe a hash function. Then first, as I told you before, I take the x and hash it, a big x, to log n plus k bits. What I'm going to do, I will, go I will take this log n plus k bits, and I say that hash 1 will be the first log n plus 3 bit, which uh, will indicate the place at the 8n array. And hash prime will be the k minus 3 uh, bits. And when I want to rehash for hash 2, then I will take it in another, spli uh, in another split. I will start, uh, hash 2 will be the last log n plus uh, 3 bits. And hash double prime will be the start of the hash. And this will enable me uh, to do that. I want to remark here that if k is small, I it won't work because it it will be it it will it won't be uh, random enough. Then how to support insertion? Then I need uh, something more. Uh, when I want to insert thing, I have a problem that now I will want to insert something here in the middle. When I want to insert something in the middle of array, what I need to do? I will need to move all the element that after it. Then it will take uh, it will take a lot of time. Then what I'm going to do? I will allocate one plus epsilon. Actually, it needs to be here a parenthesis. One plus epsi epsilon n uh, uh, element. And what I put here, I will put it a, a gaps. And in order to enter something in the middle, it will be uh, faster. Okay. Then this is cuckoo bloom filter. Uh, I just want to note that there was a paper of 16th di uh, dictionary. It was in ICAP 2003. And uh, if you look on 16th di uh, dictionary, it's actually really similar to exponential bloom filter. Then in 16th dictionary, you can, uh, you can set your universe like the, co the compressed bloom filter to be 2k time n. You have a universe of 2k uh, time n. And uh, you want to store an element then in 16th uh, uh, dictionary, you can store it in this, uh, uh, in this complexity, or this space, space complexity, or, and answer it in of 1. And actually, then uh, I said it uh, really use the same method as exponential bloom filter. It was in the same time. Uh, and actually, uh, the optimal bloom filter that was published at SODA 2005, uh, it, it used the 16th dictionary. Okay? Then now I will show you something that is more optimal than the optimal solution, which is nice to do something that is more optimal. By more optimal, uh, the thing is that here you have here plus big O of n. Then it's really funny because here you say that it's k plus 1 times n plus O of n, then why you say this thing? Uh, and uh, it won't work, it really doesn't work good enough for, uh, lit uh, for small k, 
then uh, that's what we will optimize. Then the idea is solving an equation. I will start, I have set uh, x1 until x xn. What I'm going to do, each xi I will, uh, I will ash to a vector of size n plus c. c is uh, some constant. Now, I will look on the following equation. I will have here v1 until vn is the ashes of x1 until xn. And I want to solve these equations. Now, I will say that with big probability, I will be able to solve it. This is, the pro this is a bound on the probability that I will be able to solve it. It's, it's bigger <coughs> of uh, I the probability that I won't be able to solve it is, uh, uh, is less than 2 to the minus c. When, and when I'm solving it, I, I actually, actually, if c equals 0, I, I actually have constant probability to solve it. And when I solve it, what I'm going to do, how I will uh, build the data structure? I will build the data structure by sol solving these equations. And, I, w and I, will, I will do query. To do query, I just will take a hash of, sum of some y. I will give it will give me a vector of size n plus c. And I will do inner product with this vector. Then what we get here is optimal space bloom filter. There are no uh, extra of n. And actually, this c we can set to something like 2 and or 3, and it will be enough. And uh, then you see that it takes n plus 3, but it takes a lot of time to do the preprocessing. It's solving equation. And more than that, query time. What is the query time? We need to do inner product. Inner product of vector of size n, it will take O of n. Then it doesn't, uh, it isn't really good. Then what we can do, then solution one is use sparse equation. We can use equation when vi will be will be only k places that it's a differ, it will be k places that it's one, where k is small. For example, k can be five. <coughs> I will have here, for example, v1, it will be to take b3, so b5, so b7, so b10, so b12, something like this. And then it will be easier to do the, the query. And actually, uh, Actually, it will be easier to do, to do the preprocessing if we take a, a variable densi a density. Uh, some of the element will be, some of the ashes will be uh, of density of 2. It will be only B3, so B5, or something like this. Some of them will be of 3, some of them will be of, of 4, and the expectation will be some constant. Uh, the problem with that, that we are, we will have this of n term in order to, to that to work, c must be uh, order of n, but when I say order of n, I mean by like 1% of n or something like this. Then in practical, it's good enough because uh, when I say little of n, I ac actually mean to n over log n. When I mean n over log n, it's a uh, 1 over 32 time n, then it's really the same uh, as, uh, uh, as little of n. And solution two is more uh, for a uh, for theoretical point of view. In solution two, what I will do, I will, uh, I will ash this x1 and xn to n over log to the power of two of n bucket. And I will do a solution for each bucket like this. I can do uh, a solution for uh, the bucket like solution one, but actually I can do it in, uh, in recursive. I will take this little bucket and we'll separate it again. And when I separate it again, I will separate it in such, in a such way that, that each little bucket here will be really small. It will be log n over 1.5 log log n to the power of 2. And I didn't choose the, this number uh, from there. It's by calculation. Uh, when I have this kind of number, uh, I just remark here that uh, I can do all these ashes really easy. I will need some polylogarithmic uh, random, but I will be able to to do the to calculate to calculate, uh, to calculate the hash function in of one time. It's really easy. Uh, and I choose this number because when I have an equation set of v1 until uh, v log n over 1.5 log log n to the power of two, I can say that there are no, uh, and I choose this sparse, uh, this density, I can say that there are, uh, there are, uh, there are 
there are few such kind of matrices. Then it means that I if there are only n to the d such kind of matrices, I can solve all of these matrices, and I can, uh, and after it, I will go over these sets, and I will be able to give the solution in all of one. I will, I will just go to the array of the solved matrices. I will solve it uh, uh, in advance. Then the space is this, which you see here, log log n to the power of 2. Then in case of 32-bit, uh, it will be uh, n plus, uh, this is, uh, is actually something like 1. Then it n plus n time uh, 4 to the power of 2, it's 16 over 32. Then you get here uh, 1.5n, but uh, from theoretical point of view, it gives you something uh, that is n plus uh, little of n. And processing time will take me O of n, and query time will take me O of 1, because all of the thing will be at word operation. And that's it. Otherwise, I have a question. So, oh. <laughs> um, yeah, are there any questions from Plan Schenkerstrasse? I conclude now. So, I have a question. So, the Bloom filter is one sided in one direction, right? Which works perfectly for this proxy example and yeah. also for the SS table example. So, are you aware of any data structure which has the same performance but is one sided or in the other direction? Okay. So me neither, actually, so I was just curious. Uh, I actually wa just want to remark that uh, most of these things uh, came from implementation and not from theoretic work. Then uh, most of these things are really working, and we really uh, squeeze this log E that we intended to squeeze. Okay, okay so let's thank the speaker.